Hello, my name is Beth Bedore, and I am the Kidney Goddess, and I own Creative Life by Design. And today we're going to talk about sleeping. Yeah. And um, the topic is, do you dream about getting a good night's sleep? How many of us try to go to bed at night and we're up and we're worrying and we're restless and you know, maybe we'll start to sleep and then we wake up in the middle of the night and it's, it's suffering while we're trying to get a rest, right? Right? So I want you to think about a couple of these things. Your body's awake system, sleep and awake system can give you insomnia. And that's exactly what I was talking about when you just can't roll over and go back to sleep. It's a real medical condition that they acknowledge. And um, it affects your health in more ways than one. And we're gonna talk about those today. Sleep is an essential thing for happiness in your life and well-being. Did you know that? If you don't get that night's sleep, how are you the next day? Kind of grumpy, kind of foggy. You're not as productive, right? So it's always better to get a good night's rest. It always feels so good or a nice little nap during the day too. Um, good sleep is not only sleeping well and how long you sleep, but the type of sleep you get because you want to get to REM sleep, right? You know how that kind of feels, the difference and uh, when that alarm goes off and when you're sleeping really deeply. Yeah, makes a big difference. Lack of sleep can cause long-term and short-term health issues, as well as psychological stress. <laughs> we all know about that. There are many reasons why you um, might not get a good night's sleep, right? You can probably think of some on your own. Reasons why you know tonight's not gonna be the night. I drank that stuff, you know, I took that nap during the day. I exercised right before I tried to go to bed, right? And then it's hard for you to sleep. There are some reasons, and I just told you a few. So let's go over them. Talk about the space that you're sleeping in. Is it dark enough in your room? Um, I know some people have blinds and stuff that are black. So it really blackens everything and it blacks out any sort of light that would be coming in. And that might be helpful. Um, what about the pillow that you're sleeping with? It's better to sleep as flat as you can if you're healthy and you're normal. So just one pillow. Now, if you're having neck issues, that's a different story. You might need some support for your neck. You might need a contoured pillow. And if you're having any sort of reflux or breathing issues, you may have to have your bed propped up at the top of the bed either putting something underneath the mattress like pillows or blankets to prop it up. Or if you sleep on a pillow that props you up, so it'll help with your breathing issues and your reflux. Think about the other things. What about um, the sheets that you're sleeping with? Is it 100% cotton? Is it silky? Does it feel good against your skin? Does it make a difference if it's clean or if it hasn't been washed in a while? I would tell anybody. <laughs> and then the comforter that's on top of you, is that nice and cozy or does it look really good? So if somebody comes into your bedroom and you know, you're telling them this is where I live and you're giving them the tour and they see your bedroom and it's all made up nice and it looks really nice, but when you get into bed, does it not feel comfortable? And in your bed, there might be something special <laughs> to cite your partner <laughs> or your dog. Um, what about a whited, a whited, a whited, a whited, that sounds funny, a weighted, there we go, now I got the word, <laughs> a weighted blanket. Weighted blankets can come, I think, between 10 and 25 pounds, somewhere in there. So depending on how, how big of a person you are, it's going to make a difference. So if you're a smaller person like me, I have one, I think that's 15 pounds. So I have restless leg syndrome from um, my kidney disease and my legs really ache at night. And I kind of have to move them all over. So think about that. 
if you're having restless legs or other symptoms, anxiety, ooh, I remember with my pediatric patients, we would roll them up in a mat, not so they couldn't breathe. Oh, <laughs> they would be able to breathe, but just to have some security against them. Or when you wrap up the babies really tight, I forgot what they call that, like cocooning the babies, a swaddle. That's what it's called. Took me back how many years? 25 years with my kids. Um, swaddling. So you swallow your babies. What about you? So a heat, uh, well, you could get a heated uh, weighted blanket, but if you get a weighted blanket, that might help. And talking about heat, are you in menopause, ladies? What about getting something that cools you at night? Or if you're really, really cold and your feet are always cold, then something that's heated, whether it's an electric blanket or I know they have all kinds of fancy mattresses that can get you cold, can get you hot, you pay a lot of money. Your spouse or your partner can be heated and you can be as cold as you want to because you're going through the heat flashes. <laughs> Let's see, what are other things? Do you have a TV in your room? Nope, that's not a good idea. And are you up at night working on your computer before you go to sleep? That's not good either. Mm -mm. You need to do something to help you get to sleep, to transition. And that doesn't mean work or television. Even the lights of those two things can make a huge difference. I already talked about anxiety. What about worry and anxiety? When you go to bed at night, are you thinking about all the things that you need to do tomorrow, all the things you should have done today, you're worried about that conversation with so-and-so, cut it out. <laughs> if you can't cut it out, try to take it into a better, a new story. Like, what do you wanna dream about? What are your plans for the future? Um, what kind of partner do you want? So instead of going back in the day and recapping what happened during the day and maybe what you wish you would have done different or better or worrying about the next day, getting the kids to school and you had that big presentation at work and you got to run home and make dinner, all those kind of things that we're responsible for. What if you just let it go until tomorrow? You can't do it tonight unless you get up and you take your kids to school in the middle of the night and you go to work and do that presentation. Nobody's there, but you give it anyways. And then you come home and cook dinner. By that time, everybody's up and they want breakfast. So don't do that. Um, what medications are you on? Sometimes medications can affect how you're sleeping. So you can either look at the bottle, you can ask your pharmacist, you can talk to the doctor about it if he lets you speak for more than 15 minutes in his office. Um, what about scheduling awake time and, and sleep time? So do you have a schedule of when you go to sleep and when you wake up? Because you have certain cycles, they say that that's very important. So think about that. And they even have new alarm clocks that can wake you up during um, a good part of your sleeping cycle rather than when you're at a deep, deep sleep. And I'm not quite sure how that works. If you put like a time frame on it that this is when you have to get up, but this is when you could get up. So that would be interesting. I've never tried that to see because I don't have an alarm clock, I think most of us use our phones now. And that would be another thing is not only the sleep that you're getting, but what alarm music or setting wakes you up? Does it like blast you out of bed or is it calming kind of increases? Because blasting you out of bed unless you're a really deep sleeper, then you probably wouldn't be listening to this podcast. <laughs> um, that would just like, make you wake up like that. I can't even describe it, but like horror. <laughs> I don't wanna wake my day up like that. So I try to find something that's a little bit more soothing, but that will get my attention. Let's see. I think those were most of the things that I wanna talk about that can affect your sleep. Oh, and that was for your bedroom, right? Okay, let's move on. Um, there are a few reasons why you might not get a good night's sleep. We talked about those. And let us talk about helpful tools and things that you can do to support that good night's sleep, not only in your bedroom, but during the day, right? Because during the day, we know that we're going to go to bed at night, hopefully, and get some rest because that's how our bodies get nourished. So again, the medications, you got to look at those side effects and when you're supposed to take your medicines. If the pharmacist and the doctor tells you to take them at a certain time, 
it might not only be because that's when your body needs it for like blood pressure, those kind of things, but it might be because if something's going to stimulate you, you don't want to take it at nine o'clock at night before you want to go to bed. You want to take that stimulant, whatever that medicine that has a stimulant in it in the morning to kind of get you going, right? Because that would be opposite of what you want to do at night. So you want to think about that. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention with your room situation where you're sleeping is what about some really calming music, really soothing sounds like the rainforest or the ocean or somehow being in the mountains, maybe with that, that gentle rain, um, love language CDs, anything that would be relaxing and calming, maybe a Native American flute. That might be some people's idea of some really nice music to go to sleep. So whatever would work with you. Again, you wanna think about the TV in your room. And if your partner wants the TV on and you don't want the TV on, maybe you can kind of compromise on some days we'll do it, some days we won't with the TV or at a certain time they can have it in that room but you turn it off at a certain time. Um, and I know, I think some of them even have a setting where you can turn the TV off at a certain time. It'll just stop. But um, like I said, I don't really want it in your room. That's not conducive to sleep. But if you're sleeping with a partner and they do want that in the room, there's some wiggle room there, right? There's always room to compromise, I think, until there's not. <laughs> um, what about showering? Do you shower in the morning or in the evening? I know that's kind of personal, but when do you shower? Because with my restless legs, I find showering in the evening the best thing. It relaxes my body before I go to sleep. It calms my nervous system down. So what you want to do before you want to go to sleep is anything that calms it down, you know, um, a relaxing yoga instead of something that would wake you up very vigorous. You wanna do a, a slow, rhythmic, deep, I'm even going to sleep listening to my voice. <laughs> okay, wake up, wake up. So um, those are a few things to think about. Meditation before you go to bed, or even thinking about positive things about what you want in your future instead of negative, negative things. Or like I said, meditation, meditation before you go to sleep, that would be a very relaxing thing that would be helpful before you sleep. Any sort of movement, music, sounds that would help you go to sleep. And I'll tell you a funny story real quick. My husband, when I was married, used to tell me, just talk to me, Beth. And he goes, it puts me to sleep. <laughs> now, I laugh about those things. I don't get upset when people tell me those things. I'm like, okay, I'll do that for you. <laughs> Funny. And I would talk about nothing really important, of course, but sometimes I would do that so he could fall asleep. So uh, let's see. What about the calories that you take in during the day and in the evening? You don't want to eat right before you go to bed. I know a lot of us like to sit in front of the TV and relax and eat our popcorn or whatever you have as a snack. But from what I understand through science, it's not a really good idea to eat right before you go to sleep. So cut that out. Try to have the last thing to eat at least two hours before you go to bed. And it all has to do with your digestive system. And especially if it's like uh, caffeine, uh, caffeine, if you're going to drink coffee, tea, chocolate, I'm trying to think of other things that has caffeine in it, but you want to do that in the morning. So you have all day for that caffeinated effect of your body to be released and you're not trying to sleep while your body's like, okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Um, napping feels great. But when you're napping during the day, the best thing to do is only nap for a, what they call a cat nap, maybe like 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes at the most. For some reason, and I'd have to go back and look, but for some reason, 
when we stay asleep for an hour, two hours, and we're just sleeping and we're enjoying the rest, it kind of makes you foggy, groggy for the rest of the day. It does the opposite for the rest of the day, rather than giving you that spurt of energy. Instead, you can do some other things that can uh, give you a spurt of energy if you're feeling tired. Things like jumping jacks, push-ups, getting up and just shaking out your body, going outside, getting some sunshine. These are all things that will help to stimulate you to wake up your system rather than feeling like you want to go to sleep. I know sometimes when I'm at the computer doing work and I'm at home and I have all these artificial lights, it'll start to make me sleepy. Or if I'm doing um, a project that feels like work rather than joy, then sometimes that will make me sleepy. Or I want to bug out because I say to myself, this is just too hard to do on the computer. I can't do that. And instead of saying, yes, you can and pushing through it, sometimes I'll self-sabotage myself and say, I'll go and take a nap. Now I have the luxury of doing that because of my kidney disease right now. I'm on disability and I am working from home. So I can do that. But since I'm working from home now, I'm the CEO of my life and my business, the creative life by design. So I try not to do that anymore. And it's really better if you don't, unless you're just so exhausted and you have that opportunity, like on the weekends. Um, I was just talking about that, going outside and getting some sunlight and vitamin D. Most of us do not have enough vitamin D in our systems. We do not get outside. Now, in some places of the world, they may have uh, 24 hours of sun, uh, 24 hours of darkness, but most places where we live, it's not like that. We have, you know, 12 hours of one, 12 hours of the other and get outside, go for a walk, do something in the sunlight. Even if you take your chair and you go out and sit out on the porch and read a book or talk to your neighbor, or have them come over, those kind of things. It's so much better to get out there, garden, rather than always being inside. And especially if you work at some places that have those really harsh lights, that can drive me crazy. So that won't help you to go to sleep at night if you don't get your vitamin D. And like I said, most people in America, we don't get it through our nutrition, through our food, and we don't go outside enough to get that vitamin D. And it's so important to our system. Oh, they also talk about cherry juice. I have learned uh, from a couple of different sources that a tart cherry juice has melatonin in it. So right before you go to bed, take a little bit, you know, just a small drink of cherry juice. Now it's not sweet. It's not going to be like having a piece of cherry pie before you go to sleep. No, this is tart, but it can help you go to sleep because the melatonin, unless you want to take melatonin in a form of a pill, and I'm not going to tell you to take it or not to take it. I'm not a doctor. Um, that is something that some people use as melatonin. And you can get that at the drugstore. You don't have to have a prescription for that. If you wake up in the middle of the night, like let's say you have to go to the bathroom or you wake up and you want to roll over. Again, make sure it's dark. If you're going to the bathroom, don't trip and fall over everything because you keep it dark. Um, have just a little bit of light, but don't go into the bathroom and flick the light on and all of a sudden it's right in your eyes because it'll tell your body this is time to wake up and to go, go, go. And if you go, 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 and then, <laughs> I'm thinking how funny that sounds because you're in the bathroom. If you go, 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 and then you try to go back to bed, your system's just going to be ready to go. Get up, start doing stuff. So that's one thing you want to talk about. And if you're really having problems having to get up and go to the bathroom a couple of times at night, contact your physician. That's not normal. Something is going on in your system that is producing that urine and you have to wake up and release your bladder. And I'm not going to go into diagnosis. We're not talking about pelvic floors or anything today, um, but it is something that you need to talk to your physician about. And a side note to that, I am a physical therapist that has worked with pelvic floor issues with women. 
And also men can go to get assistance with pelvic floor issues. And if you're having bladder problems, then sometimes a therapist can help, whether it's leakage or you can't control it or you're having trouble going to the bathroom. If it's a muscular issue, then um, sometimes a physical therapist can help you. So go to your physician, go to your physical therapist, just not any physical therapist, people that are specialized in that area it makes a huge difference. It's like if somebody knows how to hammer a nail, but they don't know how to build a house, why would you go to a contractor that can only hammer the nail into the board rather than to do the house, that kind of thing, if that makes any sense. Now, if you're continuing to try to operate without getting enough sleep, it's going to affect you after a while. Whether it's your job, whether it's your kids, if you're a woman and you've had children, well, even, even men, if, if um, they're a family man and they're helping out with a child that was just born, that child is gonna wake you up several times at night, right? To either breastfeed, have some formula, um, they need their diaper changed, their toddler, maybe they had a nightmare. So those kind of things can affect how you feel the next day. So it's very important to try to get some restful sleep and not keep pushing yourself because that's not healthy. You can do it for a little while. And I know that one of my sons pushes it to the limit. He's like, I'm not going to miss a thing. I'm going to go and have a ball and live my life and I'll sleep later, you know, but and sooner or later, that kind of stuff is going to catch up to you. And it's important for your body to be healthy and get, get that rest. It can either even make you depressed if you don't get enough rest. And they've done all kinds of studies out there. And I just don't want to talk about studies when we're talking about sleep, because if I talk about it enough, and if I talk about it in a tone like this, I am going to go to sleep. No. I need to wake up and tell you some more good. Let me tell you about the good news. So you can see I'm silly. I'm serious about this, but I'm trying to keep you awake because this, some of this stuff can be kind of boring. You know, it's just facts. And so I'm trying to keep you awake and on your toes and not going to sleep. Uh, oh, I already talked about the medicines. There's medicines out there that can help you to sleep and you got to go to the doctor. Well, I guess you can get some over the counter. I do a Tylenol PM, but I do not recommend that to anybody, especially for not a long-term thing, because some medications, your body gets adjusted to it and then gets addicted to it and you need it to go to sleep. However, I'm going to let you discuss that with your physician because it can affect other medicines that you're on or other uh, diseases that's going on in your body. So please don't do anything without letting your physician know when it comes to that nightmares, right? That's another thing you might deal with or PTSD. So if you're having problems with nightmares, PTSD, um, if you're anxious all the time and it's affecting you at night, again, go get help. There are people out there, there are special systems out there that can help you sleep. If you're having anxiety, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to me on my website, the creative life by design at my email, Beth at the creative life by design.com, all those different ways. And I can refer you to some people that I partnership with, that I network with, that deal with people with anxiety. I do deal with it with my coaching program, Trans Transformational Life Coaching. But if you're really having problems significantly at night, then I have some people that I can refer you to in regards to that. So, and then if you're having dreams at night, you could always go and find out what those dreams are all about if you're interested in learning those kind of things. And when I dream about this, what does it symbolize? But right now we're really just talking about getting a good night's rest, right? Because that's what, the topic is on. Um, so I hope everybody out here has some sweet dreams 
get some good information from what I went over with you today. If you'd like to go over anything again or talk with it in more detail, I gave you some of the information to reach out to me. And my telephone number, my business cell phone is 704 218 9885. And I'd be happy to discuss all these things. And if I don't know the answers or if it's out of my area of expertise, since I'm not a doctor or a PA, those kind of things, then I can refer you to some people that can help you. Because again, we all need that good night's sleep, don't we? So until next time, I will continue to have these free uh, videos, podcasts, webinars out there on Facebook. And again, you have to RSVP in order to get the Zoom link. Otherwise, you will not be able to get on. I don't want anybody to bomb the Facebook Live as sometimes that has happened to people in the past. And generally, I am online doing something on Tuesday evenings or Tuesday at noon. And that is Eastern Standard Time. So if you're putting it in your calendar, please remember it's Eastern Standard Time. I live in North Carolina. I'm on this side of the world. So that's what happens with that. And seven o'clock is generally when I have it, like I said, at night. And during the day, it's usually at noon, unless somebody requests a certain time. And sometimes I'll shift it from that. But Tuesdays are usually right now the best time to find those. And I have it on all different topics. And most of them relate to my coaching, transformational life coaching. Now, how did you say, well, what about sleep? How does that like connect with your coaching? Well, if you don't get a good night's sleep and you're trying to transition, you're practicing, you're working on transformation, how's that going to work? It's better if you can get good nutrition in you, get exercise in you, take care of your body if you're going to be doing something big or even something small and transitioning in your life. So again, I hope everybody has sweet dreams. This has been fun and I'll see you next time. Bye.